Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast of Group H Round 3, Breaky T and his Lizardmen up against Andy Devo and his Necromantic. I can show you the groups here. Um, Breaky T or Break It is on three points. So there's a chance he can qualify on a draw depending on what the Marseillais and Baylard do. So the, the, he's got a chance on a draw. Um, Devo will definitely qualify on a draw and on a win he will win the group definitely um, however there's a chance that this is a draw and Le Marcelet will win his final game in which case Devo can finish second I think Le Marcelet is heavily favoured versus Baylor in their game so I would imagine Le Marcelet will be on 6 points so therefore I'd imagine this is a must win game for break it slash breaky T. I would have really tried to play this as late as possible if I was uh, if I was break it, have more information. But um, it's very simple for Devo. Draw a win is fine for Devo, and yeah, almost almost surely Breaky T will need a win um, because you know no offense to Baylor coaching wise, he has Chaos Chosen versus Wood Elves. <laughs> so there you go. Um, looking at the teams, Devo won the toss, chose to receive has three block four guard totally standard but you know it's a little bit brittle in that you've only got three players that can handle the ball effectively only 12 players as well to susceptible to taking you know taking a beating um, but particularly just these three like you know if, if they if they take random removals you can get in trouble if it's like on your positionals um, break it has the normal six block completely reasonable with the 12th player rather than the third reroll, so I quite like that. He's also got the halfling cheerleaders, incredible. Um, so yeah, let's let's see what happens. Lovely kick for Devo. He, he for once he won't have his uh, a ghoul on his own, separate from the rest of his team. a Kaz, wow. That's why it's good to have two wolves. Doesn't apple that because it was only a 37.5%. So a brutal start already, right? That helps with a snowball. It's getting the instant the instant advantage there. And yeah, what a what a what a bad kick because that was really probably his best chance, right? Was that Devo would like, you know, pile in and leave a route through to get the ball. Now it's now it's grim for the lizards, right? It's just blitz and screen and hope nothing more dies. And as you well, try not try to not give away easy claw hits. I would give up on stopping the drive instantly. Yeah. <laughs> Instant I've I've learned my lesson after playing Devo. Do not care about the ball. Concentrate on fighting. If you if you don't concentrate on fighting here, he's gonna outfight you. And uh, yeah, smash into the wolf of the crocs. That's totally fine. Completely fine. You just have to fight him. Like that. That's all there is now. It's just a big old fight, and you have to win the fight. Like great that he's not blitzing with a wolf here, right? Yeah, target walls if you can, and in general, just try to uh, try to just win the fight here. It's all the matter. I wouldn't even care about the ball. The thing is, like by not caring about the ball, you just automatically pressure it a bit, right? Like if you can bang him out here and like make it hard for him to make blocks on you and stuff, that already like kind of makes it difficult for him to to protect the ball so much. So it really is as much as people. Some people insult bangers, you know, it's try to insult people by calling them bangers and stuff. It's genuinely, like, really good. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. Absolutely PC. 
But, having said all of that, we've got an instant two dice block. With, without block though, to be fair. And we've got a wolf blitz. Oh, he could get served here, couldn't he? <laughs> okay. Could have actually been served, hilariously. Nope, oh, Dublé skulls. Can we take a closer look at the golden fisted skink? For you, Rando, we can. There we go. I've got one of these as well. Very nice. Oh, he stood up, that lizard man. Um, okay, well. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. Bricky T is in chat. Do, do, do you know Dave O? <laughs> he has this thing where he acts like he's the only person who's ever surfed somebody before. And, yeah, this is... This is a good way to get people served. Just quietly. Oh my, I mean he's rolled all the dice here, Dave, hasn't he? But here's the double surf. Flip me. Flip me. Oh no. Oh no. That's the opposite of fighting him. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Um, you know, goodbye Devo, but you know, you expect that from him, right? So, oh, that was not how to win the fight, yeah. That was not how to keep your soul safe and win the fight, no. No. And now it now it's like so much worse, right? Even though even though these guys weren't hurt with the surfs, the problem you've got now is with only like four Saurus, we've just you know, he's gonna obviously try and get his wolves in on them every turn, right? And claw them every turn. So Yeah, this is uh this could get even worse. The, the, problem, the problem is not just that the drive is, you know, pretty much over. It's now we're setting up more, more and more wolf hits. Claw hits. I mean, there's still a chance, I guess, he messes up and doesn't score at some point, right? Because they've still got strength four and there's still skinks that can do things. So maybe he won't set up too many wolf hits. But of course, this was a a two into two into uh, hitting with a wolf if he um, hadn't powered. <laughs> hey, very good kick. Yeah, that's the thing. Is there's a snowball? Yeah, the skinks don't even need to worry about the skinks, right? The skinks will the skinks will solve themselves. Um, the big thing now is to try and eliminate Saurus as much as possible. Get these claw hits. Golden opportunity for claw hits. And then of course if Break It doesn't stand up the Saurus and get hit by claw, then you get the you get the tee off on the skinks, which is you know, it's still alright, isn't it, hitting skinks? Go straight back to the right here, I think. Because he's got the he's got the fleshy. No, he hasn't got the fleshy blitz, has he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's got the fleshy blitz. Just blitz him in the fleshy. All oh, right, going further forward even. Tag him off on a zombie. No one say a word. <laughs> it 
This is nice because you push him on you push him on the zombie anyway. And it is turn six, so he does have to worry about the ball a little bit, and now he has got clearly into range, hasn't he? So that was probably as much as he need to wait a minute. That was a bit sloppy, wasn't it? We can get a Saurus into the ball here. It's only a 1D though, isn't it? Hmm. Not that exciting. Oh! Yeah, you can push. No, you can just sidestep back, yeah. Maybe should have dodged in the skink behind, like double or triple dodge the skink in. So that it couldn't sidestep there, right? Maybe. Before making this block, this skink should have gone one, two, three. Right? Maybe that was the play. This this skink does three dodges. And then you push him to there and then you chain the Wraith away and then you get two dice on the ball. Maybe that was the play. Harder to do with only two rerolls and like, you know, three one in nine chances, but that would have actually given you two D on the ball, which you know, is that like one D on the ball is pretty rubbish, right, versus a bludger. But, I mean, I don't think many people would have done that, but I, I think that would have been the best play, right? To, to get 2D. Doesn't re roll it. Problem is, even if you power here, right, you've lost so much already, you could probably just pick it up and score anyway. But nice. Nice anyway. Now we're going to Wolf Blitz. <laughs> Wolf Blitz and Wolf Block. Oh, well, only pushes. One in nine here is a little problematic. That gets a full power. Of course he does. Oh, so that was to stop the skink 1D blitz. Wait, no. What does this do? Nothing. We should have just been here, right? Because if a skink goes there for the assist, he's got a hit from a guard square anyway. So this just leaves the uh, Saurus dodge on. So one square back was better, I'm sure. Right. Misclick the skink. Hmm. This looks good that you can chain him, but to do it, you've got to uphill with a skink first. Or you've got to, or you can block this, but then what do you do after that? So I think, what do you even do with him even if you get him free? Nothing. You can't even do anything with him if you get him free. Oh, okay. So, 
you chain this skink goes there and this skink goes here and you block this and push him into there which pushes him into there which uphills him that's still I don't see anything really good here honestly it looks like there should be something good but I don't really see anything good yeah yeah I think it looks like it should be good but oh yeah free this we yeah, free this one yeah 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 just do this block and then bl this block and then it frees him for the 1d yeah 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 that's that's and even that's like unexciting isn't it realistically Realistically, that's... It's a shame, because this looks like it could be cool. Looks like there's something here, but... It just kind of isn't. Also, he's got guard on you as well, right? So this is a 1D to do this push. It just looks better than it is. It's unfortunate that there's not really... Maybe the maybe it's good just to, you know blitz and tag him, right? Just block and then chain the this one out and then he blitzes him and bases him on the corner and you base these and then stand things up. Ah, oh, fair enough, break it, fair enough. Yeah, it's just, So just do the one D and chains him. And then punches that wolf instead of this wolf. But wouldn't have powered anyway. And it's just a 1D on a bludger, which sucks anyway, doesn't it really? So, yeah, no. No, that's fine. It's a shame there wasn't something cool there. Like, you know, it's a shame there wasn't a cool play to do something cool. But Oh, I'm going to chain this and surf the... <laughs> surf another Saurus. Oh, no, no, I'm not. Oh, interesting. Um, could have blocked the skink, right? And then pushed pushed this and then pushed it again and then double surfed. <laughs> but I don't know if he could have freed everybody up and, you know, maybe he's rushed and stuff. He would have probably done it if, if it wasn't on turn 8. He would have probably done the, the double Saurus surf if it wasn't turn 8, but... As it is, just do a safe 3D. Yeah, no, it's... I wanted to do something funky there, and it wasn't easy to do something really good. And even if you had freed that guy... Well, first of all, you rolled a push, and even if you had freed him up, like, so what? It'd just been a 1D on the ball, right? It's not not good. I, I think obviously much worse was getting everyone, getting two players surfed and maybe not just like concentrating on the fight as much as possible. And yeah, it's way easier to start watching. I know how stressful this game is because I was in one of them where I had to win. Um, so, yep. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible my game. Um, <laughs> so, and obviously I had a team, Dark Elves, that is like better at getting wins than Lizards is, so, and it was still like ridiculously, insanely, insane amount of pressure, so yeah, I completely understand. It was definitely the most... The most intense game of football I've ever had. I've never just had to win, right? Because in other big games, there's been like overtime and stuff. And you needing a win when your opponent just needs a draw is pretty horrible. Pretty horrible all around. 
Which is kind of how I feel about like the early rounds of a tabletop tournament, right? So I, I would actually kick at the early rounds of a tabletop tournament because I think they probably don't want to win as much as I do, right? Because I'm trying to win the tournament and they're maybe not. They'd be quite happy getting a draw. And feel good about themselves. Just mental. You've never had people settle for a draw against you, Timmy. Okay. Most people who go to a tabletop tournament aren't there to win the event. <laughs> oh, they're absolutely delusional. Yeah, I've been banged out turn one, but... I feel having that extra information... It's good. Only in the first rounds, you know, only in the first few rounds. If you're playing if you're playing purple goo, you can receive. Yeah. Right, so there you go, nice nice LOS makes a removal. Um, don't like them being clear, but what can you do? The big line. I've seen a lot of people just putting a big line of players. It's pretty good, isn't it? There's a lot to be said for just a big line of players. Are we going to turn a corner and try to three turn? Oof, makes the foul appearance blitz. I really hate foul appeal and blitzing, right? I would have blitzed this wolf with the, uh, from here. Blitz the wolf from here. I just hate, like, it, the fact that, like, if you just don't move off the foul appearance, it's horrible, isn't it? It's absolutely horrible. Just trying to bulldoze through the middle is fair enough, right? You can always... The, the funny thing is, is Davo's not going to care too much about an early, ooh, an early conceded touchdown, because he's still likely to win 2-1. And, obviously, Breakit has to win, so he has to score before turn 8. So maybe, maybe like, turn 4 is the best? Maybe turn 4 is the best. I mean, there's a gaping hole here now if you can knock down this uh, flesh goal. He's even pushed the Saurus out for you. Yeah, yeah, 100% going for this. Reroll this if it's not a knockdown. Gets him. A huge flank push. And uh, scoring four turns. That's pretty That's pretty good if, if he can get the touchdown. I'd be pretty happy about this. I would have probably put the uh, sort of the Croxigore here, though, right? I'd have put the Croxigore here. Um, because these guys aren't going aren't to do a lot anyway. Would be my uh, reason for that. Oh, cheeky removal. Very nice, very nice having that. Oh, okay, I liked it more when he was one back because he's making the screen with a Saurus, right? So I actually liked him without that extra rush. Time bank 120 there, fair enough. So Devo pretending to get in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Pretending to get in the way. Oh, score. So three dice, one and score, right? Is the play.
Bosh. And honestly, even with two re oh man, even with two rerolls, um, it's probably worth hitting the fleshy, right? Probably is worth hitting the fleshy. Unfortunately. Oh, gonna gonna stall another turn. Gonna stall the turn. No. Yeah, I like that. I like that more. I like four turns to turn him over. Because he doesn't have to push for the score himself anyway, so just give yourself more time to turn him over. Yeah, yeah defending his rush fail. Fair enough. Though, though the thing is, I would say, I think hitting the... I think hitting the fleshy was correct, just because... You know, you've got to beat Dave or you've got to turn him over in four turns. Like, I don't think it's the right play normally to make that hit. Because you're kind of tempting fate that you roll a dub skull and just waste a reroll before you score. But I think that small chance of casting that fleshy, you know, that changes this game from, like, let's say the chance of winning now is, like, I don't know, say 15%. If he's down a fleshy as well, then that rises up like, you know, 22 and a half. <laughs> Just talking out of my ass. <laughs> um, so while it's a really low chance of casting the fleshy, or KOing it, whatever, like, if it works, it's so it improves your chances so... I think it improves your chances so much if he's down a fleshy. So I think that probably was the right move, even though it, I, I would never do it in a normal situation. Also... Insane KOs, by the way. Very, very good for Breaky T. So, Devo down to 10. Break it on 11. Um, there's half a chance here. There's half a chance here. I think I would have put these these guys up, right, to make it a bit harder with, like, the frenzy hits. Two into one. No, it doesn't even make it. Wow, sensible Devo. There's a pretty strong argument for blitzing this guy and pressuring these two behind, right? Get the skinks in straight away. Just get the skinks in, make him roll dice. He's only got two re-rolls. Like, you've got to play desperately because the situation's desperate, right? It's not about safe moves first, sensible play. I'll keep making the right moves and then I'll win. At all. Right? <laughs> you are going out right now. You have to try to get lucky versus Devo. It won't be enough to just sit back and play properly. You've got to go for like, you know, you've got to make, let's say you're normally 30, 40, 30 win, draw, loss. You've got to like play essentially worse to make it into like 35, 65 to get those extra tiny, any percentage chance increase you can get. You've got to get. The loss is worse, yeah, the loss is worse because there is a chance, there is a chance that Le Marcellet loses to Baylor. That is true, but um, yeah, I would have apple that KO, yeah, yeah, there's nothing else going to be used on it, so yeah, yeah I would have apple that. I mean, I might have apple the Saurus on turn one, <laughs> even though it sucks, it's 37.5%. I guess you'd imagine Dave will make, some, make another removal, so... Maybe, may, maybe don't have all the first one. It's tough, though, isn't it? That's, that's, that's the worst thing that can happen, I think. To, I mean, it, well, I guess it's the worst thing that happened to any team. But, you know, like, if it's a lineman for most teams, you don't think about appling it, right? But, like, a, a kind of serious injury Saurus on turn one is pretty horrible. Versus Necro. Like, if it was dead, at least you could apple it to, to not give him a zombie and stuff. 
but yeah, by still having the app on, uh, yeah, you've got to up on that, yeah, for sure. So yeah, it's true. So, uh, you know, I am framing this as if, yeah, that was a rubbish turn, yeah, that was a rubbish turn. Um, of dice, like not decisions, just dice, wasn't it? And gets the pal. Don't really want a potato here, do you, as Dave? Oh, he's just going to try and keep it, yeah, try and keep it near the LOS. Oh, I can pause it, can't I? I can pause it. Right, I'll just pause it here for a second. And I'll show you the groups again. Um, so, yeah, so f as far as break it is concerned, if he gets the draw, there is the chance that Baylor wins versus Lamazale, and then break it will have four touchdowns scored and uh, Baylor won't and then break it might qualify in a draw there's a chance for him on a draw but or Lamar's Lake could draw nil nil with Baylor right so there are, there are chances on a draw but essentially I think they're slim I think they are slim I, I would strongly favor Lamar's to get the win in his game Versus chaos. It's not. It's not a digger bail. It's like he's versus chaos, right? Like, I personally would just scratch that off and f f feel like I had to win. And then if I threw away the draw, and uh, you know, and then Lamar's lost, I'd feel bad. <laughs> but I feel like I would definitely be feeling like I had to win this one. So crashing in a little bit, but. You know, again, keeping these guys back, I don't know, I don't know, man, you need scoring threats. This is turn 15, you need scoring threats. Can't just dodge them back. Yeah. Yeah, bottled it a little bit, maybe, eh? Those guys had to go, you have to at least get one scoring threat, maybe two. And now, obviously, Dave was just happy for the draw here. Yeah, I I forgot it was turn fifteen in one of my games. To be fair, so <laughs> like didn't realize it was turn fifteen one game. So I did a similar thing one time. But yeah, with this, it was I wasn't quite as focused as I have to win, you know. So I think I think the second half, as you say, time pressure, stress, you know, maybe maybe fell apart a little bit in the second half. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? Oh, don't even blitz the ghoul. Could have, like, six plus the ghoul, right? But again, can't score, so... Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. It's fair enough. Like, there's a child run around. The draw could be good enough. The draw could be good enough. This is, this is why you should have delayed your game as long as possible, right? To see if you had more info. Because if you know the draw is good enough, then obviously you take the draw there. And like, you know, I, I mean, I don't know what, but you know, I'm, I'm dissing Chaos here, but the Chaos do have some skills. And like, you know, the Marzale, uh, to to actually win the game is maybe, maybe not so high, but he's, he's ahead on, uh, he's ahead on touchdown scores, isn't he? Uh, well, exactly, yes, Dimmy, but I mean, everyone could delay until the last game, couldn't they? You could delay until Friday. I expect there to be more games on Friday because I thought everybody. I, I was like, let's play on Friday straight away. I'm like, I'm, I want to play on Friday, right? Because delay as long as possible, more information. Of course, you want to play on Friday if you can. Um, so like, so yeah, there, there's a chance. There's a chance Baylor wins, but if it's a draw, like the chance of them drawing nil nil is so low, right? Like if it's a draw, surely it's going to be a one one draw. Um, and then he's conceded less touchdowns, so you're losing to Lamazale if you both draw. So your only chance is Baylor winning um, against Lamaz, which, you know, just isn't high, is it? It just isn't high. It's possible, though. Like, you know, as much as I'm, slay I'm, much as I'm slaying Chaos, it is just a Bash team versus Wood Elves. A Bash team versus Wood Elves can win just because they're a Bash team. Um, so there you go. Um, 
Yeah, it was it was tough, Brick. It was tough. The, the fact that that you had Woodells, right? The, you know, they're tough. The chaos are obviously good for you, but um, Necro Necro is a funny game. It's it's kind of like if you start losing things against work, like honestly, you you were pretty lucky for it not to get worse after the double surf. If 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 the Necros get ahead, like if you start the break, it's really bad. Um, but then you know the snowball just didn't happen. Stayed in it quite well, and uh, you know got the draw, which is a good result. Yep, so that's fair enough. Um, so whatever happens, Davos qualified. He's on five points. Break it might qualify on four, and uh, Lamar's latest game versus Baylor will be crucial. So there you go. Um, no, Baylor would have to would have to win um, three nil. Baylor would have to win three 0 or three one to qualify. So it's very unlikely that Baylor can qualify because he has chaos as well. So Baylor is essentially out. He's not mathematically eliminated, but he's realistically eliminated. Um, but yeah, you know, like, like as much as Lamar's might be a big favour to win this game, he might only be like thirty percent to win or whatever, or forty percent to win, right? So definitely might not win Lamar's. Um, but there you go. Uh, I guess congrats to both, but especially Andy because he's qualified with that result. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.